Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Fix This House. On today's episode, I'm going to be showing you a quick and easy way to install drywall around piping. So stay tuned. Thank you once again friends for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. So since you already have some exposed piping here, this is the perfect time for you to seal off any of those gaps and cracks from the penetration. So here I'm using some great stuff, insulation foam. What you need here is a piece of drywall. If you have any scrap, feel free to use that. But since this is too small for my project, I will need to use a bigger piece. Here I'm using a drywall T-square. It's a perfectly nice tool. Uh, all the tools that I use in this video, I'll leave it in the description down below. Measure accordingly. So drywall is very easy to cut. All you got to do is score the surface with a box knife like what I'm using here. Turn it around and then give it a tap like that. It should crack accordingly and then just pretty much cut off the backing as you see here. Then again here I'm scoring off the surface and then cracking the back just like that and then cutting the backing. Simple as that. What I like to do whenever I'm cutting drywall around piping to save me material and I don't have to waste material is I like to use a cardboard template. Here I'm just lining up all the edges of the piping to make it nice and aligned using a level tool to make sure that my lines are nice and straight. Then I like just to freehand the radius of each circle cut out just like what you see here and then I cut it around with a box knife. Now this is going to take a couple of attempts to get the right measurement right so just pretty much go and test fit it every time and if you need to make adjustment take it off and make another cut and then adjust it accordingly and then put it back on to get that right perfect fit just like what you see here well, now when you get the right perfect measurement and everything is nice and snug um, then you're going to transfer that measurement to your drywall piece what i like to do is align a certain spot of the cardboard template to the drywall just uh, just on the right height and then trace along my template just like what you see here this tip and trick method that I like to do helps you avoid wasting material and make you get that right measurement every time because it's better for you to waste cardboard rather than spending a lot more money and buying extra drywall to fix your mistakes. I take your straight edge and just pretty much find a line that pretty much intersects both three holes or however, however many cutouts that you might have. Here I'm just aligning it just like this and then I'm going to cut it with a box knife straight and straight to the middle and then i'm going to snap it into two pieces so now i'm using my keyhole saw i love this tool because it is very versatile and i love it when when i'm working and making precision work little cuts like these like the diam little diameter holes you're going to test fit it if it doesn't fit make sure you cut along to make the adjustments same thing on the bottom piece and then i like to screw it in with some drywall screws now again i'm going to go heavy on the drywall screws especially around the piping area so that I, it is nice and secured around that void. I know this might be a little too much drywall screws but it's better to have more than having loose ends. Now as you can see here with that template method trick that I used there are very little gaps that you need to work on to fill in later on. That's why I like using that method because it'll save you time um, later on. What I'm using is a mesh tape this is pretty much a since it's going to be in the bathroom i like to use this mold resistant mesh tape it's colored green but the regular ones is usually colored white and then i'm just taping off each end now it doesn't really matter if you use drywall tape i like to use mesh tape on these little tiny jobs and as you can see here i've aligned everything according to the studs now this is for another video that i'm doing i'm actually putting a, a semi floating sink for that that's why i put those markers in there so stay tuned for that video the joint compound that I'm using here is the BDX all-purpose joint compound. If you really want something that dries faster, I would suggest you get the Easy Sand 90. I'll leave it in the description down below, which sets a lot easier and faster. This one takes a few hours for it to set, but it's the only one I have, so I might as well use up the whole bu bucket. Now, between each piping, I like to use a little small trowel just so that I can get right into between those little tiny details. And now I'm just using my joint compound knife. A 6 inch to 12 inch is uh, sufficient. I like to you cover everything up because uh, drywall, actually new drywall when you're putting on existing drywall sits a little lower. So what I like to do is I actually like to fill and cover the new uh, drywall so that it is nice and leveled with, an ex with the existing drywall around it. So 
um, again this might take a little bit of work but it's worth it because you're actually leveling everything out then I like to sand everything with uh, 120 grit sandpaper and a sanding sponge mixed together and just sand along and make sure that everything is nice and feathered especially between those piping areas just like this take your time make sure that everything is nice and leveled because once you put that joint compound texture it will be covered and nice and neat i like to put a little touch up around where the drywall screws are once the joint compound dries it kind of sinks in into those little tiny holes especially where the uh, drywall screws are so I like to touch up on those areas and between the piping as well here I'm mixing up joint compound for my uh, sp my texture sprayer I like to have that yogurt like texture just like what you see here so I'm using my 100 psi air compressor by craftsman and I like to set my psi to 100 uh, psi and I'm using this quarter inch um, air hose the spray gun texture spray that I like to use a lot is this Hiltex spray gun texture. I use this a lot often on my, uh, if you looked at my past videos, I use this sprayer a lot. I'll leave it in the description down below where I got this item. But this is very, this is a perfect air gun. It's very cheap and you can use it for small DIYs. I like to test out the texture first on a flat surface like this so that I can get the right texture that I want. And it's very adjustable. It has three different types of nozzles that you can use for options. I like to use the smaller um, texture nozzle for smaller finer um, texture just like as you see here I don't like the big textures I like the orange peel small and fine just like what you see on this um, example right now once again wait for about a day for this to dry again if you're using easy sand 90 it'll dry a lot faster then I'm gonna be taking off everything and then use uh, use my eggshell paint just so that I can cover this up now this will be covered by a sink anyway so um, still try to do your best to make it look good this is probably not going to get seen since it's going to be located under a sink but I like to make it nice and neat and since it's going to be exposed since I'm going to have that floating sink I like to put a good fine detail especially on the paint especially around the piping as well I will be changing out these shut off valves newer version so stay tuned for that video but anyways, with that being said, I like to make it look nice around the piping because this will be exposed underneath. It's not going to be um, a cabinet under here. It's going to be a floating, semi-floating uh, sink. So stay tuned for that video on that installation. So once again, friends, if you found value to this video, please hit that big thumbs up, subscribe button, and press that notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. Again, stay tuned for the sync installation and other how-to videos on this channel. Thank you so much, friends. I'll see you on the next video.